Libri Publishing is pleased to present a new addition to Green Frigate, our imprint for books that celebrate nature and philosophy. Let us invite you to look inside Book of Books, Pearls from the Stream of Time, by James Matthew and Kent Bicknell. Father Michael Collins, the author of Books That Changed History, has this to say. Book of Books offers a glimpse into the minds of people who made their mark on previous generations. We profit as we read from the past which they recount and we gaze into the future. Midwest Book Review said this about Book of Books. An inherently fascinating, exceptionally informative, thoughtful and thought-provoking read from cover to cover. One of those literary tomes that will linger in the mind and memory long after the book itself has been finished and set back upon the shelf. And Adur Gopalakrishnan, the artist and internationally acclaimed filmmaker, said, Book of Books is a feast to the intellect, an aperitivo for starters, a digestivo for the sated. Bon appétit to all guests. It would be worthy of age to print together the collected scriptures of sacred writings of several nations, the Chinese, the Hindus, the Persians, the Hebrews, and others, as the scripture of mankind. This would be the Bible, or the Book of Books, which let the missionaries carry to the uttermost parts of the earth. Thus wrote Henry David Thoreau at age 32, a dream so large he could not fulfil in his lifetime, for alas, his life was cut short at age 44. If his dream was so large, so was his vision. Asked if life in the woods was not lonely, Thoreau replied, Why should I feel lonely? Is not our planet in the Milky Way? Thoreau's first book, A Week on the Concord and Merrimack Rivers, was published in 1849 by James Munro and Company. My publisher falsely so-called demurred Thoreau because he had to pay for it. 704 unsold copies out of a batch of 1,000 were returned to the author in boxes labelled H.G. Thoreau's Concord River. Thoreau carried them up these stairs and noticed them to be more substantial than their fame. Sitting in this attic and looking at books piled up half as high as his head, he boasted, I now have a library of nearly 900 volumes, 700 of which I wrote myself. Turning to page 396 of A Week, Thoreau, to his dismay, found out that the publisher had omitted three lines from his manuscript. He picked up a pencil manufactured in the Thoreau family pencil factory and wrote the 32 words which Monroe had cut Thoreau wrote clearly to save trouble for the lucky one who finds it. These words might bear the core of the transcendentalist creed. Behind the field before you, there is the field of a wholly new life, which no man has lived. This copy of Thoreau's book, A Yankee in Canada, was presented by Thoreau's sister, Sophia, to his friend Theophilus Brown. Thoreau, the botanist, owned this copy of the Handbook of Plants and Fruits by Loring D. Chapin. On page 55, Thoreau annotated with three vertical lines in the margin. Thoreau, the naturalist, pressed this plant by his hands. His sister Sophia labelled it Marsh Rosemary in ink. Henry wrote the same in pencil below that. Thoreau, the surveyor, surveyed from Tom Wheeler's woodlot. He referred to it in many places in his journals. The first issue of the transcendentalist magazine Aesthetic Papers, edited by Elizabeth Peabody, published in 1849, was also its last, for no issues followed as Elizabeth conceived. The activist Henry David Thoreau's essay, Civil Disobedience, printed in it for the first time, made her firstborn immortal. Each set of the 20-volume manuscript edition of the author Thoreau, published in 1906, came with a leaf of his handwritten manuscript. Thoreau's outline for a monumental project on nature is included in set number 10, another project which was too tall for a life cut too short. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the sage of Concord, 
was 14 years older than Henry D. Thoreau. Here, Emerson sends the young Thoreau to Boston to borrow a book for him. Will Dr. Bass give Mr. Thoreau Chevalier's notes on the United States for our Waldo Emerson? Emerson quotes from one of his poems on nature. He paints with white and red the moors to draw the nations out of doors. A score of airy miles will smooth rough Monadnock to a gem. Emerson inscribed this copy of May Day, a collection of his poems, to his friend and neighbour, Judge Edward Hoare. May Day contains Emerson's enigmatic poem, Brahma. He wrote and signed this fair copy of Brahma. If the red slayer think he slays, or if the slain think he is slain, they know not well the subtle ways I keep and pass and turn again. And who could not hear the echoes of Yama's instructions to Nachiketa in Kata Upanishad in Emerson's Brahma? If the slayer thinks that he slays, or if the slain think that he is slain, both of them do not understand. He neither slays nor is he slain. Or of Sri Krishna's instructions to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. He who knows it as the slayer and he who knows it as the slain, they both know not rightly. It kills not, nor is killed. The words and actions of her intellectuals transformed America in the mid-19th century. This book is one of the first 15,000 copies of Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, published in 1852. This book was so incendiary that when its author visited President Lincoln, he asked, Is this the little woman that made the Great War? Frederick Douglass, a former slave who stirred the nation's conscience with his oratory, inscribed this copy of his autobiography. This is an albumen photo of Captain John Brown. Brown and his men raided the Federal Armory at Harper's Ferry on October 16, 1859. On October the 30th, Henry David Thoreau delivered his speech, a plea for Captain John Brown. John Brown was hanged on December the 2nd. The first shot of the Civil War was fired on April the 12th, 1861 at Fort Sumter. Was not the first shot of the Civil War fired in Harper's Ferry 18 months before? Abraham Lincoln being sworn in as president on March the 4th, 1861. No hat. Where are the masks? On January the 11th, 1863, the president urgently summoned Senator Colomer to strategize the 13th Amendment which will abolish slavery in America. Abraham Lincoln was shot on Good Friday, April the 14th, 1865. Poets, philosophers, prophets, revolutionaries. Are they not different names for the same? The transcendentalists of America were profoundly influenced by the sacred writings of the East, Indian, Persian, Chinese. In 1855, Thoreau wrote to his friend Daniel Rickardson of a delivery from India, stating... I send you this information as I might of the birth of a child. This stanza on page 25 of the Sankhya Karika by Iswara Krishna must have caught the attention of the transcendentalists. Sensible objects become known by perception, but it is by inference or reasoning that acquaintance with things transcending the senses is obtained. The publication of the first English translation of Kalidasa's Sakuntala by Sir William Jones in 1790 was of such impact in the West that Goethe remarked, Wilt thou the blossoms of spring and the fruits that are later in seen? Wilt thou have charms and delights? Wilt thou have strength and support? Wilt thou with one short word encompass the earth and the heaven? All is said if I name only Sakuntala, thee. Thoreau referred in Sakuntala in Valden. Even in Kalidasa's drama Sakuntala, 
We read of rills dyed yellow with the golden dust of the lotus. This is Thoreau's friend Daniel Rickardson's copy of the first edition of the Phoenix, a collection of old and rare fragments published in 1835. This translation of the Bhagavad Gita was inscribed by the translator Mohini Chattayi in 1887. Thoreau extolled the Gita in a week. I would say to the readers of the scriptures, if they wish to read, read the Bhagavad Gita, the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, translated by Edward Fitzgerald, given to Annie Fields by Sarah Orne Jewett. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes, or it prospers, and anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, was gone. This is Frederick Ives Carpenter's copy of the translation of the Gulistan by Sheikh Saadi, published in 1865. Professor Carpenter taught medieval and Renaissance literature in American universities. One day, through ignorance of youth, I spoke sharply to my mother, which, vexing her to the heart, she sat down in a corner and wept, saying, have you forgotten all the trouble you gave me in your infancy that you thus treat me with unkindness? If you had but recollected your time of childhood, when you lay helpless in my arms, you would not treat me with violence, now that you have the strength of a lion, whilst I am an old woman. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, there were ample exchange of ideas and ideals between East and West. Annie Besant, the British theosophist, worked in India, and Swami Vivekananda awakened the West to ancient Hindu wisdom. In this small book, My Master, he summed up the message of his teacher, Sri Ramakrishna, to proclaim and make clear the fundamental unity underlying all religions was the mission of my master. The Swami's signature was a visual statement. If ancient Indian literature influenced the philosophers of young America, the latter influenced the intellectuals of modern India. Mahatma Gandhi thought and wrote admiringly of Thoreau. More recently, Indira Gandhi, then Prime Minister of India, wrote to Professor McAleer in Boston about Thoreau. His words ring long in the mind. Those who live in the storm of politics need the quiet pool within for sustenance. Thoreau lived by such a pool. Mohandas K. Gandhi and Rabid Ranath Tagore were the two luminaries of modern India and who ushered the dawn of a new era. The Mahatma fasted his body almost to death and freed his soul. The poet sang his heart out and let the spirit soar. Together they resurrected the phoenix. The first English translation of Gandhi's autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth, was published in 1927. These are fragments of Gandhi's prayer speech for September the 23rd, 1947, corrected in his handwriting. The Gita, the Quran, the Bible, the Granth Sahib, Zend Avesta contain gems of wisdom, although the followers might belie their teachings. He hoped that he would cheerfully die at the hands of anyone who chose to take his life. The Mahatma being carried to the prayer ground on January the 21st, 1948. Nine days later, Gandhi was assassinated on the same ground. This autograph portrait of Rabindranath Tagore was taken by Jindrith Vanek in Prague in 1928. Gitanjali, or Song Offerings, was first published in 1912. The Nobel Prize, awarded the very next year, brought instantaneous fame to Gitanjali and its author. In his God the Father figure, with his message of brotherhood among men and peace among nations, Tagore will tirelessly trek the globe for nearly three decades to come. Gitanjali's songs and Tagore's voice reverberate through the ages. Thou hast made me endless, such is thy pleasure. Thy infinite gifts come to me only on these very small hands of mine. Ages pass, and still thou pourest, and still there is room to fill. 
The night has ended. Put out the light of the lamp of thine own narrow corner, smudged with smoke. The great morning, which is for all, appears in the east. Let its light reveal us to each other, who walk on the same path of pilgrimage. We leave you with these parting words the poet uttered days before his death in 1941. The hour is near when it will be revealed that the insolence of might is fraught with great peril. That hour will bear out in full the truth of what the ancient sages have proclaimed. By unrighteousness man prospers, gains what seems desirable, defeats enemies, but perishes at the root. That hour the poet spoke of is nigh upon us again, we are afraid. Yet Rabindranath Tagore left with an optimistic note. I look back on the stretch of past years and see the crumbling ruins of a proud civilization lying heaped as garbage out of history. And yet I shall not commit the grievous sin of losing faith in man, accepting his present defeat as final. Perhaps the new dawn will come from this horizon, from the east where the sun rises, and then unvanquished man will retrace his path of conquest, despite all barriers, to win back his heritage. Now, Depart ye all in peace, filled with the joy and spirit you have received. Go spread the good word about Book of Books to the uttermost parts of the earth. Thank you. <laughs>